Throughout the Catholic world today, we celebrate the 19th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Here in Australia, however, we celebrate the memory of St. Mary of the Cross, Mary MacKillop. In her life, and in the gospel text that is given to us by the Church to meditate on, two major practical themes emerge. Let's consider them. The gospel text is Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. On the face of it, it seems very straightforward, but somewhat annoying. Jesus says, don't worry. Now, who among us can simply not worry? Worry is part of living. I think Jesus is pointing to something much deeper. He's pointing to the question of trust, where you are grounded. What matters most to you? Do do the things of this world, what you are to wear, what you are to eat, are these the things that gnaw at you, distract you, preoccupy you? Now he's holding out a vision, an ideal vision of a life lived from the kingdom. The words near the end of this gospel text are absolutely crucial to understanding what Jesus is offering here. He says, seek first the kingdom of God. He's not inviting us to seek first some kind of moral achievement. He's saying, open yourself to what's on offer. Matthew's Gospel in chapter 4 has already told us that Jesus began his ministry by proclaiming the good news of the Kingdom of God. Which raises the second question, the second issue, the second theme, which is prior to the one that is obviously on offer in this Gospel. And it's the theme of, that is, could be stated this way. We proceed in the spiritual life in deep human growth by way of facilitation, not conquest, not mastery. Growth ultimately comes as grace, as gift. But paradoxically, this is hard work. It involves persistent and consistent, generous self-giving. Basically, Her task is to get out of the way. And we're always inclined to get in the way. It's hard work to get out of the way and let God be God in us. The kingdom of God that Jesus invites us to seek first is a state of being in which God reigns. Where God is experientially known as the source of all that is, creator, lover, saviour. St Paul put it nicely when he wrote to the Galatians, I live now, not I, but Christ, the Son of God, lives in me. That is the source of life as we know it. That is the source of the moral life. It has been a great tragedy in our Catholic history that we have focused on the moral life and forgotten the life of Christ within us. If you place the moral life first, you get into a performance syndrome, trying to please God by willpower, by mastery. And it becomes evident in a moment like this when Jesus says, don't worry. If you bring that moralistic approach to what Jesus is saying here, it's a formula for worry. Jesus looks at you and says, don't worry. Well, you furrow your brow and say, all right, I'll try not to worry. And you start worrying. Set aside your desire to be someone who doesn't worry, worry or doesn't worry needlessly someone who's grounded in what matters. When it comes to the big issues, you are confident in God's promise. I'm with you. 
Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Mary MacKillop, like many, perhaps a lot more than we realise, is someone who bears witness to this. Her commitment, her endurance, her generosity, her willingness for self-sacrifice made her available along with the many, many extraordinary women who've joined her over the last 150 years, made her available to that great gift of the kingdom. God will love us into freedom if we let God do that. So that the triumph of Mary's life is not her moral achievements. The triumph of Mary's life is the triumph of grace the power of God at work through her. She has become a place where God enters the world, an extension, if you like, of the incarnation. That is our vocation. That is our privilege. But it's hard work. It takes great effort. The focus of that hard work is simply getting out of the way, recognising that God wants to be God in us, and God is love, and God's love will liberate us. Let me draw attention to a very simple thing that Mary MacKillop said, and I think it epitomizes this disposition that she has come by grace to experience. She writes, do all to the sisters, do all you can with the means at your disposal and calmly leave the rest to God. I can't think of any more psychologically sound, spiritually rich advice than that. Do all you can with the means at your disposal and place it in the hands of God. Can you do anything more than that? Mary's disposition puts me in mind of another great woman of the church, St. Teresa of Avila. You know, after she died, they found a little note in her breviary, her prayer book, in which she had written the following, and it shows aspiration as well as witness. Teresa wrote, let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things pass away. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Those who have God find they lack nothing. God alone suffices. Mary MacKillop and Teresa of Avila are one. One in their experience of the God-shaped life. And it is that experience of the kingdom where God reigns, which manifests itself in a variety of graced ways, one of which is the capacity not to sweat the small things or even the big things. So if you want to be a person who doesn't worry, and let me say in passing that sometimes anxiety is born of childhood experience, and you can't just snap your fingers and get rid of that. But you can avoid being anxious about being anxious. And one way is to name the truth of your anxiety. God comes disguised as the truth of your experience, the truth of your daily life, your disappointments, your little victories, the tedium of duties, the smile of a child, the embrace of a loved one. God is present everywhere. God comes to us in the ordinary stuff of life. The more intimately we grow into God, let our lives become God-shaped, the more we are likely to be able to know exactly what Jesus is saying. Don't worry, your Father knows you need all these things. 